Okay, I mentioned a while ago that I was going to make a video trying to make some of the counterintuitive um, OmniWheel mathematics a little bit more intuitive. Um, here we have a few, we have an OmniWheel bot here, and then a couple different OmniWheels. These are VEX OmniWheels, and in my opinion, they look, they're, they're pretty nice wheels. VEX makes some good wheels, in my opinion. Um, now I, this tape, this piece of paper here was just wrapped around the wheel to get the circumference of the wheel. And so I use this uh, circumference to kind of lay out some stripes on our table here. And you can kind of see now we have a, a colorful table top. Now the idea is this is our starting point here and this this long yellow line is the straight track and that's the direction the robot will travel. And now the, these diagonal lines, um, mainly just the yellow one, this, is, this yellow one is 45 degrees off from the straight. And so what we're gonna do is see how far the, the Omniwheel will travel when it's pointed 45 degrees to the direction of travel. And my initial assumption was you'd have to get the wheel to spin faster if it's tilted out of alignment than with alignment. But that is not the case. So let's go down here and let's watch the wheel. Um, you can see the mark there on the tape. And we'll just roll it across. And sure enough, we get uh, one, uh, one revolution comes to this red line, okay? And I have a red arc here to indicate um, one, one circumference of the, tire, of the wheel. And so now let's roll the wheel again along this yellow line out to the red line. And we'll just get it lined up. If I can do this while I do the camera at the same time. And we'll roll it out to here. Okay, there we go. So now we've had one revolution. Now, we, with one revolution going straight, we went out the, to here. One revolution pointed 45 is out to here. Now, here's the trick. We're not going, tra we're not traveling 45 though. The wheel's pointed 45, but we want to travel straight. So it turns out, it's about, you get the same distance as if you roll it sideways out to that point there. So, instead of going to the red line, you go out to where the two yellow lines intersect. Theoretically, you, with, with friction, you end up going a little bit less, but it, it's close enough to, to you know, work out so you can do the mathematics and get your robot to drive reasonably straight. Um, anyway, I thought that was pretty cool to see how it rolls. You get, you get this free distance right here from the rolling of the wheel sideways. And, and that works out. Let's see if I can hold it steady enough as I roll it. Okay, I'll try to hold it 45 degrees and roll it. Okay, it didn't work out quite right there, but I have a robot and hopefully the robot will make this easier. So let's get the robot lined up at the starting point. And where's the front wheel? Oh, the one with the little yellow tape on it. Okay, so this is our front wheel. So with it perfectly aligned with this yellow tape here, one revolution would go from this red line to that red line. We're not gonna point it down the line. We're gonna point it at 45 degrees. And I'm gonna start the robot up. We're gonna go slow. And so this is a setting of um, 150. And I think this, these are Dynamexel, um wheels down here and I think they go up to like 1,020 um, something uh, but we'll go, we'll keep it slow that's the wheel speed the bot speed not the wheel speed it's different so the wheel speed will be slower than the bot speed and then the angle now theoretically it'd be 45 degrees but I ended up having to um, change it to 57 degrees to overcome a couple of problems. One is the friction, and the other thing is the Dynamexel um, motors don't turn very well at low speeds. They don't, you can't really accurately adjust the speed at low speed. And so this is just kind of trial and error on that. So 45 degrees, 
then I also had to make it rotate a bit because otherwise the uneven friction would cause the robot to rotate. And so this is a, a, a positive rotation in this case will make the robot spin um, clockwise, but that's just to, to counteract the counterclockwise forces on the robot as it drives. And let's see how well this, this does. We'll get a little bit of a glitch at the, at the beginning because I don't have the wheels ramping up to speed. It does have a gyro on there, but I'm not sure if it works this well at low speed. Okay, so let's see if we can get this wheel aligned with 45 degrees. Right as it comes around on the red line, we'll drop it and we'll see how it travels here. And you can see overall, We're headed down that line there. Well, let's go back so we can watch the yellow tape on the wheel. So now we're coming just around to one revolution and we've already passed the red line for the circumference there. So we went past our one circumference mark. And oh, and we're but just a little bit shy of our, uh, our theoretical um, place where we should end up. But that's not too far off, in my opinion. You know, so we're like, you know, maybe a little bit more than an inch off of our theoretical destination. So, I, I hope you can be convinced that uh, the um, distance the wheel rotates is proportional to the speed of the wheel. So, as the a slow rotating wheel going a long distance means the robot is going faster than the wheel is rotating. And I hope that turns out okay. And I guess that's about it for now. I might try again with the yellow tape, but I think I'll need to have a second person to help hold the camera. Um, anyway, that's it for now. Thanks.